Well, hey guys, welcome back. I'm Imperial Jedi, and this is episode number five of the series. And you guys seem to really enjoy doing the highways in the last episode, so I thought we could maybe do a little bit more of that. I know we have a lot of stuff unlocked that we haven't quite gotten to yet. Like, I know we've unlocked high density and stuff, but I figure we should have a little bit more of a foothold in terms of traffic and everything kind of just kind of laid out before we start moving in a whole bunch more people. So I think what we're going to do for this episode is rebuild our first little highway interchange here. And I'm going to replace it with something that's pretty cool, pretty unique, and a little complicated to build. So hopefully we can get it. And uh, they're pretty common. They're popping up in... Uh, oh, nice. Small city upgrade. Cool. And oh, we get trains. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So yeah, we're going to be doing, like I was saying earlier, um, kind of like a train setup in here. So still a lot of work to do in this spot in terms of like even how the roads are going to be laid out. Like I've already started a bit of a one-way network. And unfortunately, the forest kind of burned down. Um, and I did drop... I need another one of these. Um, now two incinerators over here and when I uploaded it to the workshop that's kind of the state it was in and I also changed this back road here a little bit made it longer um, and I turned that into two um, the two lane one way road so that more cars would be inclined to kind of turn right and use this the, the proper way okay so for this interchange what I want to try making is a um, what is it called uh, diverging diamond um, uh, interchange here. I think it's one of those crossover interchanges. You'll kind of see them. Maybe go by a few other different names, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the game because we're going to be disrupting traffic here. And I don't want my poor computer to get a headache of having to recalculate everybody all the time. And what I'm going to do is um, make a bridge out of this little section. I'm going to have these continue on straight through just for like kind of a reference point. And then we'll kind of start construction over here. And what I'm going to do to start just to kind of get our pillars and everything just in the right spot is I'm gonna toss in some roads right here so that when we're deleting these, our endpoints are um, even Steven. So that's pretty easy. So let's bring that in. And that's not how it's gonna stay. I think realistic, realistically what's gonna happen is I'm gonna change the way these roads kinda go in. I'm gonna have these two kind of line up with that, but maybe one of them become a bridge or, or something. We'll, we'll figure that out, but for the moment, let's let's work on this thing. Um, okay, so I want to try possibly doing this in stages. Let me see if we can get this all on the first kind of attempt, though. So I plan on upgrading the road, which means I'm going to be leaving some space in between everything. And the road itself, it's the slightest, littlest, eensiest, weensiest amount crooked. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm not going to be too um, concerned about that. Just because the highway itself coming, you know, like that came with a map or whatever, just a little bit off, but that is A-OK. -okay. Might as well get our directions going the right way now. Okay, so what we're left with is basically this. Kind of like a little bypass here, which is no problem. And what we're going to do is for spacing get the same thing over here actually let's go for a little bit more and I'm just trying to make sure that we have the same number of tiles kind of in the front of our little road here so that's four tiles four tiles cool so I mean pretty much even is kind of what I'm going for maybe not a hundred percent but okay so we've deleted one little segment back I'm going to give us just the slightest amount more room to kind of work with over here. And it'd be kind of cool if that lined up with this, just for the sake of a little bit more visual. So that's about three tiles back. Great, so I'm just going to get rid of this now. Shaving off a little bit here. And these ones I'm going to have to draw by myself, but the idea is I'm going to be coming across like this, and I'm going to be um, heading over to that direction. And then we'll have our corresponding one kind of meet in the middle right here. And I wouldn't say that's 100% even, so let me try that one more time, but we have to kind of eyeball it. So we're going more or less just to the center, kind of. Yeah, I think that's a better one. Yeah, that's much better. And we'll do the same thing over here. Trust in the old eyeball. And I don't go like that with this one, because it makes a weird curve. I come down like that to come in. And same idea, I think it needs to be just a little bit further over. 
And the reason why it matters is we're going to be upgrading the road. Well, that actually worked really well like that. Nice. So that we can um, accommodate some more lanes. You'll, you'll kind of see what I'm up to here. A little bit of chaos. Okay, neat. So you're coming and you're going to the other side of the street, basically. And the idea for this is when we put our lanes and stuff now, you're kind of merging a little bit more safely with traffic. And it's a lot faster, too, just in terms of an outflow. All right, so I should have enough room for the upgrade. I found out when I was testing stuff out that you had to do this in stages, which is really strange. But first I upgrade to the highway road. But what I'm going for is hopefully some traffic lights here. And I tried doing this with the six lane road right away, but I didn't have the space for it, which was very, very strange. But you can comfortably upgrade afterwards. And now we're left with the double light, this like wicked looking kind of double road thing. So you can see right here, traffic lights. So it's, it's governed pretty well. And then what we're doing with the way the roads kind of lay out is, um, you'll see why and how this is like a super fast, efficient system now is we go like this and we'll I mean we'll do our best we'll kind of get this maybe somewhat symmetrical so let's try oh right that's not even okay so that's 15 units you'll see what I'm up to just go like this just for point of reference So I'm going to come in like that. Awesome. You can kind of see how this all just kind of flows naturally now, right? Okay. Touch your way on, your way off. Perfect. And these will be deleted. So that continues on like that. Probably have to redo our power line. And that curve has to be slightly changed, but that's okay. There we go, that's more or less that. Okay, so this now, if you're going in, you turn in like that, but if you want to leave, you go out basically like that. Kind of neat. And then same idea over on this side, just to avoid having to get caught up in the light, you just go like that. And of course, these arms, you know, they might not look too even. We can maybe do a better job of trying to get them even, but I wasn't necessarily going for 100% symmetry. But you can kind of see what we're after, what we're going for here. So this is kind of cool. It does make things a lot faster in terms of the, uh, the flow through. Okay, well, let's do the other thing, or same thing on the other side now. Alright, what's our fastest way to do this? Okay, so let's start over here. And I'm probably going to do the same kind of technique again, just so it looks sort of even. So I went out to 15. And I put a little bit more in. I don't remember if it was that or that, but that's probably good. Hmm. That's probably the variable, why things look a little bit crooked, because that's probably not even, but that's okay. And so this was coming out kind of like that. That one's going in like that. Get rid of these. Awesome. Deal with the curve on that a little bit better. Excellent. See, that's cool, right? So you have the option to kind of go both directions. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty fast for traffic, all things considering. And to keep things, you know, relatively safe, because you're merging with traffic that's kind of going your speed, your direction already, so you don't have to worry too much about having to kind of, you know, chaotically switch lanes a lot and worry about getting in the fast lane and this and that, so... That's kind of neat. I really like this. There we go. Not too intrusive in terms of the size, but I think that turned out really nicely. And this can continue as a bike lane up and over. 
All right, let's turn on the speed. Let's see what happens here, see how it works. Awesome. Now, hypothetically, that should be not a traffic light, so maybe if we make that... Oh. Maybe this inner part here. Yeah, there we go. Or, no. That's what we're after. There, that fixes the traffic lights. Perfect! Great, 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 great. And we still need that, even though it has extra lanes, just so that we get the traffic light. Awesome. Oh, this is done emptying. Get rid of that now. The main thing, though, is this should handle really high volumes of traffic without getting too backed up. And hopefully more of our citizens in town start using this, and that'll free up some of the other interchanges. Just make sure nothing gets too, um, too bogged down. Okay, so we know it works. We definitely have to fix this end of town now. So I think what we're going to do is maybe push some of these roads a little bit further back. Try something with this. That's a one way, let's say, going in. Move our police station. Two way traffic right here. And then one way traffic leaving. And it'd be really nice if we can somehow. Go up and over, I think. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, just something like that. Hopefully this doesn't look too intrusive. Hmm. Well, there we go. Nope, not quite. Almost, though. And I'll probably have, uh, I think, one more way to kind of get on. Yeah, that's much better of a slope. That's up and over. It's like here we almost need like that to kind of happen. Yeah, something like this. Yeah, there we go. Now, as far as uh, continuation to these dirt roads, we can have that one kind of go like this. Yeah, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, zone that back up. And I think we've done it. Let me get rid of our zoning on these just to kind of make things a bit faster through that little spot. I think we could do a little bit of a change in direction here. Just a few offices to kind of govern things. Like administrative buildings to the area, almost. Let's change that. And I think we're going to make this continue as a one-way. I think a one-way going that way. It's the force traffic out, so you have to go right. which means that should get the upgrade. But I don't want the traffic lights. That's the whole key to this. All right, that's probably enough of a mess in this area, but I think that's good. And I can already see the traffic is flowing a little bit better. And then my other plan, in terms of the highway, since we're kind of on our little highway grind right now, get rid of these. actually, how are we doing for services? Power's pretty good. Yeah, water, probably a little bit more. Just until the city kind of gets a little bit bigger and we unlock some more stuff. I usually just kind of do this as a little temporary solution. Just keep adding maybe one or two more. I'll eventually start a new sector for it, but in the long run, what I like to do is just make a little area for utilities. 
have like a little canal system, do some like terraforming, just make it look kind of fun. Maybe link it in with like a nuclear power plant or something. All right, so my other idea for the highway system down here was to craft ourselves a um, an express and collector system and to actually rebuild this whole thing and have a, a, a new kind of waterfront parkway kind of open up along uh, along this part right here. I'm going to have like a new interchange. So, I mean, it's pretty ambitious, but I want to try that. And we'll kind of see how um, how it goes with time. And gosh, I just love this. Super cool. Very, very fun. So, something different than this, but let's build, um, yeah, let's build over here. And again, nothing wrong at all with this interchange. It's just, I think as the city grows, this might not maybe be, like, I think we're kind of, it'll be a, a bottleneck. It'll get a little bit slow down. All right, so my plan is to not necessarily destroy what we have here. Maybe just do something a little bit different. And you can see what I did is I uh, kind of shrunk down the little on and offs for our bike path. I don't necessarily think we have to get rid of the bike path. But what I'm just basically going to do is um, kind of have from here. Work on that in a second. And you know what, since we're about to redraw this, let's redraw the whole thing. And that'll give us more spacing, because now we can be a little bit more liberal with how we want things to be. And like, you know, this kind of stuff, like, don't be afraid at all to do some, you know, major infrastructure projects, especially early on. Just make sure you have the money kind of thing for it. So just a little bit more in the direction that we want, and it kind of gives us a bit more room to kind of work with. I don't dislike that. I gave us a little bit more space in between so that we have um, some more options for pillars. Otherwise, the curve, you know, a little, a little more gentle, I think. Gives us still the same kind of space we're after. Okay, so just a basic collector system would be like, say you're not at all getting off to, um, to go into the city. You want to just drive right on by. You would stay in the express lane, so there'd be no exit to the city from there. But running, like, literally right alongside... Probably even closer in real life you just have like a highway divider usually but we'd have a um our little collector kind of system right here so we can run that along and you would use this road for your on and off ramps and your exits and everything to get into town and then you'd have a few i don't know if we can sneak any in you basically have a few on off points and we'll probably have to make some room for that but the idea is, yeah, if you're getting off to go into the city, you would use your collector system, and then your express would be um, left just for um, yeah, people just kind of moving on through. And then, you know, in busy cities, if there is like an accident in the express, you have your collector as kind of like a bypass. So hypothetically, there's a way on right there. And I might maybe be able to get lucky with some of these roads here, but I don't think the angle is just right. Okay, well, I'm going to try that again. I'm going to space things out um, a little bit further in some points, but I think you guys kind of get the idea of what I'm going for here. We might maybe, maybe lose the bike lane. I don't know. We'll see, though. Hopefully not. That can always be changed or moved or whatever, right? And then we'll kind of see how time goes. I'm hoping to kind of finish this within the episode. If needs be, I can always do a little of this off camera. Yeah, much more room to work with. And then where we won't have the on and off points, I guess we can just kind of make things go a bit wide like that. Yeah, we can kind of work into that roundabout again. All right, so we went for the non-symmetrical approach, which is totally fine by me. Excellent. Main thing is now we can do this. Get people off the uh, express onto our collector. All right, well, where is a new interchange going to be? Probably right over here. All right, bring that down. This so I can kind of show you guys what I'm up to. All right, so that works. 
And I don't want it to be too disruptive to the um, the bike path. So this, I mean, can very simply just be a um, kind of like a diamond interchange, right? So if we have more of these interchanges in general, they shouldn't get too flooded or too backed up. So double lane like this. And you know what? Instead of making it like um, I was gonna do kind of like a partial clover leaf. I think that's a little too complicated. We'll just do just the most basics, right? Just something like this. And we'll kind of test this out, see how it does in terms of traffic. But let me draw the other side now. We'll just kind of convert this. And so I did want, like I said, to make a new kind of waterfront parkway. So this will not be part of it. That'll just be kind of like a bypass, but I want kind of an interchange to kind of work over top of, um, of all of this. So we'll see how we get that in there. I don't necessarily think we're going to get to it this episode. I'll try though, but time is starting to get away from us. There we go. All right. A little steep, I, I do kind of agree and acknowledge that, but say la vie. And then so after you're um, kind of getting on, you would have a way to get to the express. So if you don't want to go to the next exit, so that would probably be one of these. And then anyone getting off of that exit would get off the express around here. Perfect. Make that like a partial merging lane right here. Not room to make that two lanes the whole way, so let's just do this. Okay. Back in business. So I do want to make a little bit of use out of the roundabout here, like I was saying. I think I'll realistically have a road go like that. And then what we can have to get on and off the highway is just something like this. There we go. Lots of options, right? Like I said, you guys don't have to copy me entirely. The whole point of this is just to kind of give you guys some inspiration and like that kind of stuff, right? And my plan is to do some beautification so we can do some rock, some terraforming, just, you know, make a little bit more kind of like life and semblance out of this instead of just having to have it just all stark concrete. Okay, let's put in some more um, on and off ramps on these sides. So just something like this even for the moment. Works for me. There's your way on. Perfect. Making your way over that way. Great. Let's your way off the express so you can do an exit over here. We can just do a diamond style like that. And if we want, just for the extra lanes, upgrade the last little bit. Same thing over here if we want to. Otherwise, cool. All right, and on this side, let's bring this back in kind of the way we had it before. Right into that roundabout. Hopefully this doesn't get too backed up. But the fact that we're spreading a little bit more out kind of um, makes things a little bit better. So you don't have to exit into the roundabout. Now you can also exit right here, which is kind of cool. I think that's pretty good for our on-offs right there. Happy with that. All right, this is also pretty functional. Off and on, off and on. All right, yeah, I think this actually works for what we're after just to kind of get us started. So what I can do just super quickly to end things off is I'm gonna do the slightest amount of um, beautification and we'll, we'll put the speed on. But what I mean by that is we'll put down some like rocks and like trees and, and like that kind of stuff. 
So hopefully we'll see some people use this. And you know, if this does look a little bit too too steep or too crazy, we can always change that. Make it a little bit um, a little bit safer. We can always do something like this, right? Yeah, I think that's a cleaner. Let's do that. So yeah, stick around, guys. I'm going to do a little bit of beautification after this, and we'll probably do a little bit more on highway stuff just in general as kind of the series continues. So if you guys have any special intersections or anything you want me to just attempt in real life, not real life, that you've seen in real life you want me to try and attempt here, just let me know, and I'll happily give that a, uh, a go. There's a lot of stuff, I mean, people think that if you're not using mods, you can't create these pretty crazy custom interchanges and stuff, but you totally can. And then, yeah, next episode, what we'll do is we'll start by making our little um, kind of link where the uh, the parkway is. It might not be in this exact spot, just because we ended up using maybe a little bit more space with this than I kind of thought we would, but I'm sure we'll do it somewhere, somewhere close to here. Hmm. Maybe I can't get that one to work. All right, well, I guess that one's stuck on the... Um, well, I don't really want to be stuck on the collector for too long. Let me make that go a little bit wider, and that should be just enough room. Yeah, there we go. Perfect, I see it. There we go. And I'm trying not to make those too close to one another. So I may actually move that a little bit further down. That's, I think, the variable. There we go. And then in terms of beautification, you know, it's pretty easy to go overboard. And some people just have, you know, like a specific style in mind. So you don't necessarily have to copy me again. Just, you know, you guys are just welcome to kind of get some inspiration. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. Still enough time to kind of merge. Okay, great. Great, great, great. And then just in case, extra lane right there. All right, so safe for merging. I think we're going to do one more of those, and then we'll do some beautification. And then one thing's off. And then, guys, I do apologize for being a little bit slow to answer some of your comments. I do try to incorporate them into um, videos, so definitely keep the suggestions coming. Don't mean to ignore you or anything like that, though. Um, okay, so as far as it comes, you know, rocks and like that kind of stuff goes, um, I maybe, like I said, go a little bit overboard, so if you feel like you're not really digging this style, it's totally fair. You don't really have to use this, right? But what I like to do is just kind of like a cluster of rocks in and around my highway system in these kind of open spots, just to kind of make things look a little bit more just natural, lifelike. But I guess it sort of depends on where you live. So I was saying just in another series, um, you know, people who live in like northern climates, like northern Europe, Canada, like that kind of stuff, right? Like you see a lot of rocks, a lot of granite, like exposed shelf, like that kind of stuff. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of creating just clusters of rocks. I'm slowly moving up in terms of the size of the rock I'm using. And because the assets look pretty similar, I'm just gently rotating them kind of here and there. And when it comes time to these big ones, these are pretty cool too, because they're kind of like half sunken in. And like I'm not really um, too concerned about the trees, because those are going to be going back in afterwards. All I'm trying to do is just make little kind of rock clusters, and then just kind of build, you know, from there basically. Just a few more of these going in. And of course, this again comes down to personal preference, so you know, stop at whatever point you feel like you, uh, you know, you kind of hit and achieve the look you're going for. And the neat thing is, like, when you're starting to use these big ones here, they have a little um, kind of bit of rocks incorporated in them. So now when you're overlapping and layering, you get these really cool, just densely kind of packed little rock areas. That's kind of neat, right? Because the assets allow for just the slightest amount of overlap. And then you can just kind of kind of hide the rest in some trees. That's cool. So it really it depends on what you're going for. Like if you find this is a little bit too much, don't even worry about it. If you love this, then awesome, you know? If not, no worries, right? 
And again, you know, the whole goal of this is just to kind of give you guys some inspiration, right? Alright. So I say, I mean, it's not a bad job. Pretty much what we're after, right? And then we'll put now some trees back in just to kind of fill in the look. And we do have to make sure that we're using trees that we're either using often in an asset or that's already in the map. And these ones, they're not too often in the map, but I'm going to try and use them a lot so it'll kind of look like they're part of the um, overall scenery. And I just like a little bit of variety here and there anyway. My intention for this little area here is I want it to feel like you're kind of driving through like the forest almost, or like maybe this was like kind of a bit more cliff at one point and then maybe part of it like demolished or whatever. There we go. I think that's kind of what I'm after. And then be a fair warn, there is a limit to how many trees you can put down. It is very, very high. Um, you will eventually hit it though and you'll just suddenly be like, what? So I just, you know, be aware of that. Have that in the back of your mind. That's kind of cool, right? See, it just, again, less is more, but at the same time, if you do add more things to it, it just kind of fills it in a bit more. As you can see, now that the trees are there, that looks cleaner and a little bit more complete. All right, well, three speed is on. Let's see if people actually use this. I think so. What a very big change to the, uh, to the city in such a short period of time here. That's kind of fun, though. I'm really happy with this. So there we go. So a little bit over in the time. Hope you guys don't mind that. Um, but we'll end things off here. I will see you guys in the next one. Definitely let me know your thoughts on our new interchanges and everything. Pretty cool. And of course, I will be uploading this to the workshop. So feel free to, you know, work on this. Expand on it. Send me some screenshots, too, guys. I'm seeing a few of you already using this in some, uh, some projects, which is pretty cool. All right, friends. All the best. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you again. Let me know how you're doing. Have a great day.